Hey everyone, this is a nameless ghoul from Ghost. You're listening to Heavy Demons. So my dear nameless ghoul, how's this tour going? It's going well. It's going well. Yeah, it's the bigger, it's the biggest European tour that we've ever done as headliners. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, we're playing every city that we're coming to. We're playing a bigger place than we did previously. So uh, that is, I, I mean, could it be better, right? <laughs> yeah, with, with Zombie, which are an amazing band. Which, with Zombie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which is great. I really love those guys, and I really, I love them as, as, as persons, and I think that they're a great band. Yeah. And I think that they fit very well, and we do a really good thing together. So, um, overall, I'm very pleased with the band and, you know, the, the tour, so. Yeah. And talking about the, the birth of uh, Ghost, uh, why this uh, uh, hugely influenced, uh, Catholic-influenced uh, imagery from a Protestant place like Sweden? Good question. Um, I come from um, um, a, a very non-religious background, for my, me personally. Um, but I come from a very artful, art-loving and culturally loving home. We didn't have a lot of money, but we have had a lot of culture. So my mom was always very keen on, you know, art and she worked at an art, art gallery and you know she had a million books about you know big 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 yeah. books about cathedrals and art and, and, and all these art uh, you know uh, uh, all these painters and and um, one thing that she was very she was never religious or he, she is not religious uh, maybe as an older person she is sort of I guess sort of drifted a little but she was always very adamant about taking me, you know, around and go to churches because of the cultural heritage of it. And in my hometown where I grew up, uh, we have an old church. Um, it's, it predates uh, Protestantism in Sweden. Um, so it has that sort of Catholic... Uh, it's built by Catholics, and it was built at the time of Catholicism, and so it has that sort of big, lavish, you know, you know, very typical, like horror-esque, uh, sort of imposing thing. Rather than you know, a real Protestant church, so like small, low, and it's supposed to it's simple. simple. Yeah, simple and like gray and Brain. just stone. Yeah. Whereas this is like pure Gothic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Even Steve Sylvester would look great in there, you know. So um, <clears throat> that was one of my growing grounds when I was a kid, because I was very interested in in um, religion. I was very interested in 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 the idea of an afterlife, and and because I, you know, I was interested in anything that had to do with someplace else. Uh, you know, being someplace else. I always wanted to be someplace else. So it was always, you know, for me, church was like a, an alternative to Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of the same, but it, but with the, with the odd little difference that churches, for some reason, even if it was a church in Lin Shopping, it felt like it was historically bound to a lot of these big fresques, a lot of these big paintings they they had. You know, because in in the, in the Lin Shopping. Um, what do you call it? Dom Shirka, the uh, you know the big church, this big cathedral in Shopping. Um, they also have like big pictures of you know Christ being like tormented. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know and, and it's really really brutal. Yeah, for very Christ brutal. Is more like normal. We are used to it. In yeah, <laughs> no, but but just because I saw that as a kid, it yeah. was normal for me as well. Yeah. Because I but I, I found it very interesting going there, and a, a lot of that. Even though I was never religious, religious, I definitely took a lot of that with me going into adolescence, and you know, with watching films like Old Man and Exorcist and all that. So the devil became a very attractive figure for me. But it was it went hand in hand with actually going in going. When I say going to church, that doesn't mean that I went to mass and what was like. I took a, like a communion. Yeah. We went there on the opening hours. Okay. And we went there to, to hear concerts. My mom was the sort of person like, they're playing Vivaldi. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> and we sit there and like, ah. Uh, anyway, because I liked music, I liked it too. But obviously, I, you know, I sort of 
Yeah, <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. And so. do, you, do you feel like closer to, I mean, Satan or Lucifer, like hedonism or spirit and knowledge? I believe that most of the things that we commonly refer to within the liturgy of, of, of Christianity, which undeniably I think Satan is a, is a figure there as well, you know. Um, you know, I'm struggling as, an, as a phil phil philosophical, imaginative kid. I want there to be magic in the world. I want there to be a lot of things. I want to believe in a lot of things. Yeah. My intellectual self that I hold in the hand, or I hold my 14-year-old self in the hand all the time, but my older self knows obviously that um, maybe it's not true, yeah. you know, maybe you shouldn't take this for... I believe that there are forces. I believe that there is energies very much like the force that George Lucas explained. I think that is probably closer to what I believe than like a god and a devil down there. Uh, you know. Um, but I am I'm also humbled to the idea that neither myself nor you or anyone else knows. So you might as well sort of be open-minded. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> Once one day you'll see yeah. anyway. So it's like if you just like make the best out of time that you have here, it will all be revealed one day. Yeah. You know. Well, so it's fine. You don't have to you don't have to behead people because no. of it, you know. <laughs> and talking about earthly things, uh, which are in your opinion uh, like papa's main vocal influences, uh, you know, the guys he loves. <laughs> when he sings uh, his inspirations. I, I, I don't know about him, but from writing, I mean, it, when I when I write the music the that music. he's playing or yeah. he's performing, performing yeah. um, I write from a very vocal point of view. Okay. The vocals are always... Melodies. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I would probably say that the biggest influence is from a vocal point of view coming into arrangement and writing songs thereafter um, comes from other bands that I would or artists that I would would reckon do the same thing um, Queen easy simple example yeah. where I'm sure that most of the songs that they they even wrote collectively often had a very vocal um, signature theme rather than just a riff, it was, you know, and uh, uh, big other influences for me is the Doors, so there's a, I guess there's a little, little Jim Morrison in there, you know, in, in a way, and um, actually Morrissey, <laughs> I'm Morrison a huge fan, of, 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 of a huge, huge fan of Smiths. And I like Smith's, even though it's not very, you might not hear it in Ghost, but it's very Smith's influenced in the sense that Smith's always wrote, wrote different songs. Yeah. It could be like a, a, a beat and to a ballad, to yeah, yeah. Uh, that and that, and then just a piano track and all kinds of, they were very bold. And I am very influenced by bands that are Brave. I like that. And which, uh, uh, what did like a uh, uh, class album brought into Ghost into the songwriting? He brought in focus. He was very good at. Um, I liked working with him because he was very, very um, questioning. He was like. This part, it sounds like you haven't really thought about that part so much. Demanding. Yeah, where it sounds like this part you've spent hours on. Is that true? And I was like, uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, yes. That wasn't, that part is not as important as that part. Take it off. Take it off. Why do you need it then? 
you know, don't do don't do it. All right. Okay, let's let's you know, he was write something else, write something better. And you have to sit there and just like, okay, um, you know, can we agree that this is a sort of a riff in E and that it ends here and that it leads into this? Yes or no. Um, I think that you need one part and then another part and then comes this part. This part that you've already done. You need to do a bridge in between that part and that part. Do it. Okay, and you had to sit there and, and he come back after a while like, hmm, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, and then you had to like, uh, you really had to step up your game. And I definitely need that. I write, I like writing like that. I like having to prove myself. Living motivated, motivated life. Yes, because I think that oftentimes, and this, this is definitely what I would do if or when I would produce someone else. Mm -hmm. Like, don't leave every, anything to chance. Yeah. Because songs are so important. Yeah. There's a big difference. There's many, many, many songs written. But not all of them are good. And most people can agree that that song, that song, that song, that yeah. song is a good song. Be it Ace of Spades or We're Not Gonna Take It or Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. or uh, For Annie or whatever, Memories. And what's, what's common with them is that they're very well, well written. Even if, even if Ace of Spades is like raunchy metal, it's still a song that contains no fat. Yeah. Take out the fat. Be to, you, to the point. And that's what I learned from Klaus. Even, I mean, I'm hoping now that we're going to work with him again for this album. We haven't really decided yet. We're still sort of trying to make the schedules work and all that. But I will forever, for the rest of my life, have a little claws all and sitting on my on my my, uh, my on my shoulder and say that mm, the vocal line on the second second line is not a, it's not the same as the first. I know that it it needs to be the same. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It needs to be the same thing again. Does it? Yes. Okay. And then you'd write it like that, and, if, and, and you rewrite what you just wrote, like, okay, let's try that then. And it actually sounds better. God damn it! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> you were right. So. so... Like one final greeting to the Italian fans of Ghost. Well, thank you for, for being so supportive over the years, and thank you for all the good music. <laughs>